These are notes 2.7B, or maybe you might want to call them 2.8. I don't know. I kind of have them mixed up on the tracking sheet. But we are still going to be doing some solving by factoring. And in order to do that, we're going to just do, again, a little bit of review going on first. We're going to do a little bit more advanced solving by factoring. So you're going to have to pay a little bit more attention here with how we do this. First of all, let's review the two ways we have so far. Number one, by solving by factoring. If it's already factored for you, you do not mess around with it. If I need to figure out what multiplies, I mean, what x values would make this multiply to equal zero, I just set the left side equal to zero. I, the reason I'm stressing this is sometimes kids see those two binomials and they're like, I got to FOIL it. If you FOIL it, you're just going to have to factor it again anyway because we're trying to solve this thing. And So when it, we want it solved, we want it factored, and it is factored. So in a situation like this, you do not mess with it. I did not. The directions will not say multiply. It'll say solve. And to solve it, you want it equal to zero and you want it factored. If it can't factor, we need another way. And guess what that is? It's the next section. Ha 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 ha. That's my evil laugh, my devil laugh. All right, so we are doing the opposite to solve this. We add one to both sides and we get twice x would equal one. Now we divide both sides by two and we'd get x is a half. We say one half is the solution to the quadratic equation. You might say, LaRue, you said quadratic needs to have a squared term, and this one doesn't. And I'd say if you multiplied it out, it sure would. All right. My other solution would be x is equal to negative 8. Those are my two solutions. And then in the last section, we said, uh, psych, not factored anymore, but it was fairly easy to factor. And we said, if we want to solve this one by factoring, what do we need to do? Well, we need to factor it first. So we need to unfoil. I have to lead in a pair of x's, so no worries. But today, there's going to be some where there is a worry out front. We'll deal with it when we get there. What multiplies to equal 14? Not a winner. Score with a 2 and a 7. However, sign analysis tells me they have to be the same sign, and they have to add up to a negative, which locks me into a pair of negative numbers. Now I simply solve this the way I solve this one up here. I say in order for these things to multiply to equal 0, either the left is 0, which means x would have to equal 2, or the right is 0, which would mean x would have to equal 7. And these are the two solutions to the quadratic equation. And that'll get you through part of your worksheet, actually. It'll get you up to um, number nine, actually. One through eight on your worksheet are very similar to this, although I have to caution you that they're not all equal to zero. So now what I want you to do is draw a line. And below that line, we're going to write more advanced. All right, and we're going to pick up the difficulty here a little bit. So I'm going to go erase this. And underneath that line, we're going to try one like this. New. And you probably guess what I'm going to do first here. I'm going to have it not be equal to 0. I'm going to have it be x squared. Uh, let's do plus. Let's do minus. Minus 3x. Minus 12 is equal to 6. I think that's what I want to have it be. Yep, that'll do it. All right, so you'll notice on this one, it's breaking the number one rule of solve by factoring. And that has to be equal to 0. So let's write those steps out again over here. Must equal 0 before you try to factor it. So I need to move that positive 6 out of there. So I need to subtract 6 from both sides because I need that right-hand side over there to be 0. So I get x squared minus 3x, 12 in the whole, down 6 
is down 18. Think of temperature. It's already down 12 before you drop it six more. And that will equal zero. Now I get to factor it. And again, we hope that the factoring is easy. We hope it's like this, where we just have to do x and x, in which case life is nice. And on this one, I'm just looking for what multiplies to equal 18 that I can get a 3 out of. 2 and 9, not a chance. 3 and 6 sounds like a winner. I need to have the negatives win out, so the negative goes with my larger number. I have to make sure I have more negatives. That is the factored version. After I factor, I set each equal to 0. So I say either this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0. Now you should be used to them enough now where you should kind of know that this is going to be negative 3, positive 6, because we just have that opposite thing going on. But sometimes when there's numbers in front of the x, it really does help to physically set it equal to 0 and solve it. So x equals negative 3 is one solution. What that means is if I were to stick a negative 3 in here and a negative 3 in here, subtract 12, it'll poop out a 6. Trust me. Or this other piece would have to equal 0. And I have two solutions to my quadratic equation. So one thing that makes these advanced today is that, first of all, you have to get that right-hand side equal to 0. Second of all, we also are going to need to have a little bit more advanced factoring techniques. Because what if it's 2x squared plus 10x plus 12 is equal to 0? And it's equal to 0, so first thing's checked off, but now I need to factor it. And you might say, oh, I remember that. That's the kind where you multiply this by this and go through all the steps. Yes, but before you ever do that, you should always look to see if can I pull anything out. So, because it knocks it down. Can I factor anything out of every term? And the answer is yes, because these are all even. So it'll be to your benefit to factor a 2 out of every one of these, because it'll make it a lot easy. Oops, 16. Where did my brain come up with that? That's ridiculous. 12 divided by 2 is not 16, my friends. It's 6. So kind of looking at them when you're doing them, when you see that this lead number here is not a 1, before you start going through the big, long process, see if you can pull it out. And on that one, I could. The reason I do that is now the rest of this factors nicely. What multiplies to equal 6 and adds up to 5? 3 and 2 is an obvious solution. So this one, because I spotted pulling out that 2 right away, it made it knocked down into something that's pretty easy to work with. So if three things multiply to equal zero, at least one of them has to be zero. Well, two can't be zero. x plus two can be zero if x is negative two. x plus three could be zero if x is negative three. So I have two solutions to this quadratic equation. The last thing I want to discuss is, what if it's a big, hot mess? And this actually is going to be number 13 on your worksheet so that you kind of know when you're going to hit this type. All right, number 13. Actually, 13 is not too bad if you clean it up nice right away, I don't think. So uh, let me take a look at it here. It would be k squared minus 8k. That's not the one I want to do. I want to do number 12. So number 12 on your worksheet, when you go get it, it's going to be gray. And when you get to number 12, you might be getting a little stuck. And you're going to look at this, and maybe that will get you going for the rest of the worksheet. This is a very advanced level. Honestly, first semester, we did not have one this difficult on your test. And I won't put one this difficult on this test either. But you guys have been doing so well. I thought I'm going to challenge you a little bit here. Um, 
with number 12. Hopefully it's not too much for you. So first of all, when it says solve by factoring, I need to get it equal to zero. In order for me to do that, I need to get these off of this side and over to the other side. And in order to do that, I need to do their opposites. So I need to add 30 to get rid of it. I'll line it up with its like term. And I need to subtract 11r. Now line that up with its like term. And what I get is 5r squared. Down 44, down 11 more is down 55 r's. 120 up 30 is up 150. And the right-hand side is equal to 0. And this is where you go, oh, crap, this isn't a 1. I hate that kind. However, you'll notice they're all multiples of 5. So we're going to take a 5 out, take a 5 out, take a 5 out. And maybe that'll make it easier to work with. When we divide out a 5 out of every term, we'll get an r squared. 55 divided by 5 is 11. 150 divided by 5 is 30. And now notice, this is pretty easy to factor. Here's why. It now has just that one out front, so I know I've got an r and an r. That's the only way to get r squared. And the multiples of 30 that give you 11 is pretty obvious also. 6 and 5 should just pop right into your head. So 6 and 5. I just need to be careful with my signs. Both positive, both negative, or one of each. And here's how I make that decision. They have to multiply to equal a positive 30, so this one's out. They have to add up to a negative 11, so this one's out. So I know it's minus, minus. Now, let's solve that. I would say something has to be 0. 5 can't be 0. 6 would make this one 0, and 5 would make that one 0. And these are my solutions. So you're Next task is to go grab worksheet number eight. And it is light gray. And you might want to have me check a couple of those before you move on with it, because that one's kind of hard. Have a good one, guys.